Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for such a great turnout. And then I le let me introduce also Matt Muller, who is also co-founder of uh, the company. I'm extremely excited today because uh, I've seen tons of solutions for AR, VR. And our claim is that to make something work for AR and VR, you need to have a good input mechanism. And just the uh, talk before us, it was uh, a fantastic hand tracking solution. But our argument that hand and voice is just not going to cut it all the time. Quite simply put, imagine yourself in public. And when you are in a public situation, for instance, when you are in a subway station, um, you see yourself continuing your digital life, right? And this is nothing new here. I mean, about 50, 60 years ago, you would hold a big newspaper. Now you use your mobile device. Imagine all these people doing these fantastic hand movements with fantastic tracking. Wouldn't it look a little bit awkward? But let's turn up the knob a little bit and then see the next situation when you're in a conference. You're taking either notes or you're bored. And then you still want to carry on your digital life. So you're using your, again, your mobile devices. I think hand voice would be pretty awkward again. But let's turn one more, this knob, and squeeze yourself into an airplane, especially in an airplane middle seat. By the way, that's one of the igniter of the idea came. I mean, I think this is the most confined public situation. You're, you're, you're closing a steel tube, you can do nothing, and not even using your hands, I think, or your voice. So we thought that we should come up with something better. But before jumping there, let's overview a little bit the eye tracking. Because we believe that eye tracking, at last, is going to be ubiquitous. What I mean ubiquitous is not necessarily is going to be uh, available just now. But I see the signs which will make it within a foreseeable future everywhere. Let's have a huge jump and see when eye tracking is placed on a chip. Qualcomm came out with Glance, which is you can see the diameter of a coin and you can si see the size of a chip. Extremely power efficient. It's all the computation is built in. And then these sensors could be pretty much everywhere, and literally a couple of cents. So this is not expensive, fancy, like the 15K, and I could name tons of companies when they're selling their eye trackers. But flip one more, the, the coin, and see, well, came out a startup. Sub $500, pretty good eye trackers in it, and it works nicely. So the next frontier is actually this frontier is already crossed. What am I talking about? I mean, this is, here's a VR headset done with eye trackers. In fact, the very first VR headset, which is built from bottom up around the eye, which is, come on, it's so obvious. It's right on your head. It's in your head, right? So quickly, Vive took steps. And I think it's a pretty smart move, because this is you can flip in to the existing headset. So you don't have to just buy a new one. You just flip in. This is $250. Again, pretty accessible, but you see where I was coming from, a couple of cents, right? And that's already out there. But why, when it, it's introduced, it's just, I think it was about a month ago, something really interesting happened half year ago when Google snapped up iFluence. For eye tracking, it's pretty much one of the moments when Facebook snapped up Oculus because a big player said, I think eye tracking is going to be important. And I think we will see a lot more of this because Google, well, I don't have to introduce, but when their intention and this is an amazingly well designed, an amazingly well working eye tracking logic solution, iFluence. I mean, kudos to the team. Uh, that was a major moment. A couple of weeks after, however, Facebook st stepped into the game and said, Well, I'm going to snapping up another company, iTribe, which is also a very, very nice company, doing really, really well. So, just as a quick overview that the tech, that even startups can make it, and even the big players are looking at it. And then I could throw out tons of tons of like car industry and so on, all looking into the eye because actually this is a fantastic place to capture attention, vice versa. So what we designed with eye, gravity gaze. And we are going to give you, we will jump into space right away. Because we call it gravity gaze quite literally because it works like if you would have an embedded gravity in your vision. Um, our goal is a completely hands-free solution where things, where you look around, understand what, how you are looking at, what you are looking at, 
And actually, it sticks to your eye. And then you can move things around with your eye. Matt, it's hard to explain, of course, a VR experience, but Matt is in space, grabbing humongous asteroids and crashing it into crystals and make them explode. This is a sort of a gamification of the concept. We are throwing it out, so you're looking at it, it understands that actually your attention is at that object. And then you can push it, pull it, bring it, take it around, and then grab it, and then crash it into crystals, or do whatever you want. Um, and this is, this is the highest level of representation, what we do. That's why we call it gravity case. You can, you can really, really play around with it. Now, let's make a huge jump and then show the story how it works on a 2D screen. Because yet again, we said that we don't want to do something in one device. But our logic works across devices, not only platforms, across devices. So what you will see now is a 2D screen, simple computer, enabled with Toby eye trackers. The, 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 the one before was Fove, and great fan of that company. And now Matt is just using his eyes, no eye trackers had attached to his head, and then he's just pulling these boxes on the screen. Imagine, imagine a coder using his hands, imagine a designer, and then you can just move objects around. However, it is very easy to say, but very difficult to make. And that is the moment when <laughs> Matt is going to reboot the whole thing, and then he says, just let's give, give me some time, because I need to explain that we are going to introduce you on HoloLens gravity gaze. And that was the toughest one, because to do 3D eye tracking and making sense of it, because our eyes, is, um, my eyes just jump me around. Even you, you think you're looking at me, but actually your eyes are just all around the place. And if something happens there, you quickly look back, there and back. It's an amazingly reflexive user, I mean, a reflexive uh, uh, um, organ, your eyes. It is really, really doing crazy, crazy stuff. However, your attention is clear cut. You can still, of course, do things with it. So we had to find what is the moment when your eyes are paying attention to that thing. So in HoloLens, that, that's by far the hardest. So I really, really crossing all my fingers, even my toes, that under these lighting conditions, it makes sense and, and, it, and it works, that um, you pick up, the, first of all, the system understands what is the digital objects you're looking at, then you grab it, and then you move it. And then you can see right now that Matt is in, actually, I should just step yeah. over. I'm just in your way, yes. So Matt is throwing and pulling balls um, on his imaginary ground with his eyes, pushing around, tossing, and then when he looks up, there are a couple of spheres which he grabs in space. It's, I think, the eye. And then what, what he will do, for instance, break up that wall and then pu pull the cube right there. The zero G uh, cubes just started to move. So what he does is pushing, pulling, grabbing, and tossing stuff in space with his eyes totally hands-free. Because what we set out to do, that our device is hands-free, you don't lose the control, the navigation, and it feels magic, just like as you would be feel, uh, using the force. But we really wanted to give you some other, some other uh, uh, and then our demo is really to show that it is not only cross-platform, but we do it on various devices. So the next short video is about a drone navigation. We wanted to bring the drone in-house, but what happened actually, um, they said we have to become a pilot. So we kind of, we really tracked down so Matt would become a pilot. Uh, it didn't happen, so what we have done in an enclosed space, we recorded, we pulled together various devices. I mean, again, a big feast of, of, uh, of making tech work. This is our fantastic colleague, Sorob, um, who made this experience. So you see a drone with navigating with eyes only. There is an AR overlay, and then you can make the drone move, which is like a physical device. So now, we took the digital into physical. And this is an amazing, in your HoloLens, you see nothing else. There is no interface. You just see the drone in life and the rest of mixed reality. So what we wanted to do is to invent and then implement a very simple software solution which can be embedded into any, any 
hardware which has either an eye tracker or is connected to understanding your eyes. And I really, I'm, I'm really happy, and for us it's a very historic moment. We have been working on it since some time now, and, uh, and it's a great crowd. So we wanted to also record something which is our latest solution for the eye tracker. And because it is a something somewhat new, um, I would say, instrument, because I think the company... I wasn't ready. You needed to stall. Oh, yes, actually. So this is the time I say, and actually, the beginning of the time, it was so hard that when I was uh, hearing from Matt, this is just really, really hard, there was a moment when I said, I just might pull the plug. Like, let's not make this one happen, because it is really freakish, freakish hard. So what happened then, uh, Matt g asked me, two more weeks, and I said, well, let's give it a try. And then that's when, in fact, after two weeks, he came back and made it work. Um, but this last, last one is, is, um, is somewhat different, because if you remember the latest announcements of, uh, and of, of this great company, uh, uh, Snapchat coming on board, they actually have snap glasses, right? And then you have to still lift up your hand and then push that button. And then our system, is that simple that you just walk on the street, and this is a complete garage, hacky kind of like weird stuff right now, but you just walk on the street, it's gravity gaze enabled, and then you just take a snapshot or a video, and then it just magically works. So um, that will be one of those historic moments, but maybe I come up in another story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, um, it is recording when you see the little LED lights spinning around. So, what happens now that Matt is looking at you and, and he just took a picture with his eyes. So, what he did, he used his eyes only to pull it and this mechanism just clicked it and he could carry on with his life. So, our solution here is a cross-platform, cross-device, cross super hand-free, which is right from your eyes, which is called gravity gaze. Thank you, thank you very much for your attendance. You have a couple of minutes for Q&A. Oh, okay, sure. If there's any question, wow. We really tried to, to keep the 15 minutes. And you succeed? Um, there is one question on the right. Yes. Where's the picture you can send? Oh, can you? It's a snap glasses, so I'll take the video off of there and put it into Snapchat. Maybe. So it autom automatically, automatically synchronizes with your phones. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with snap glasses, but they, they put automatically on the phone. Um, can we stream it or not really? What's that? Is it synchronizing? I mean, it's right now it's, synch synchronizing. it's synchronizing with his phone and it will be on his phone right away. Like, I mean, that's, that's snap glasses, right? We just applied gravity gaze onto snap glasses. Yeah, there is one behind there. So, um, as far as your eyes, like, you have to be special with your eyes to be able to kind of sort of grab or change? So that's the whole point of gravity gaze, that what we decoded is what is attention? When does that happen? Because right now I'm trying to look at you, and then my problem my eyes is trying to find you, but that's because the device is recording the direction where I'm looking and how deep, how far I, I, I'm looking. Yes, so it has to have an eye tracker somewhere in the chain, either with the 2D screen, it's in the computer or on your head, but the eye tracking mechanism understands your eyes and then from that we can conclude your attention. And then the really tough part was that it, there is no Midas touch, so you can literally like, oh, that's the one I want to move, that's what I want to push, or that's, that's the knob I want to activate, and so on. And then you just do it like, as if you would have a force. I, I just imported it. The so there is a video. <laughs> that's our memory. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually... Yeah. Um, if I... Oh, no, 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 nothing. That's, that's, that was the, that was the part we had to make, so it's not hard on the eye. Actually, it feels like you would have a very infinite, almost infinite third hand, which you can use. Thank you again. Thank Thanks. You.